Hey, people of planet Earth. Finding out there won't be any ground vehicles in Starfield made me want to look back at some of the vehicle mods for Fallout 4. I've listed them on screen right now, but as always, I don't want to waste your time, so let me tell you quickly. These mods are all, with the exception of Flyable Personal Vertibird, completely terrible. Flyable Personal Vertibird is actually quite a good mod, and I have no problems recommending it. But the rest of these mods belong in one place, the Recycle Bin. That's all you really need to know, but in case you need some justification, here's two reasons why these mods suck and why they had no chance of being good despite the best efforts of the modders involved. First, Fallout 4's world streaming is incapable of handling the player moving at speeds significantly faster than sprinting, so vehicles have to be slow as molasses otherwise the game will stutter and eventually freeze, forcing you into a Morrowind-style loading screen. Having a faster SSD or RAM might help a little bit, but this behavior is a fault with the engine itself, there's no way to completely fix it. Second, these vehicles are basically just vertebrates, but on the ground, which means they turn on a dime, have terrible collision models, and get stuck on everything. Fallout 4's vertebrates were only ever meant to fly in the air, and they can barely do that. Obviously, they're not going to function properly on the ground. They might behave well enough on perfectly flat terrain, but on the bumpy and uneven landscapes of the Commonwealth, they'll flip out without you even trying. Flyable Personal Vertibird gets around both of these issues. I don't really know why, maybe it's because less of the world is loaded when you're in the air? But even when running a plugin that doubles Vertibird speed, allowing the entire map to be crossed in less than 3 minutes, I only had a small bit of stuttering with FPV. Trying to reach those speeds on land would be impossible, the game would freeze every few seconds. There are additional advantages to using FPV, its vertebrates can be entered in power armor, and they can be configured to consume fuel and ammunition to make them balanced for survival playthroughs. You can also easily bring multiple companions along with you, and just like the vanilla BOS vertebrates, autopilot is available to make travel a breeze. Because flyable personal vertebrates builds on top of the vanilla game and doesn't try to reinvent the wheel, it's a much better mod than any of these other options. It is my recommendation, and I put another mod in the description that lets you double the speed of vertebrates, which I would also recommend, but only if you've installed Fallout 4 on an SSD. Anyways, now let's take a look at all of these mods. I'm not going to spend too much time dwelling on why each individual one sucks, because the best argument against any of them is a one minute showcase of just how terrible they look. Our first mod is called Drivable Motorcycle Mod. This poor mod clearly had a lot of work put into it, so it's sad that it has so many problems. To get it to work properly, make sure to download its script update file and load the mod configuration menu. You can find the titular drivable motorcycle at the entrance to Diamond City by the statue. It requires a bunch of materials to repair. Once you've spawned those in and fixed up the bike, take a look at the settings holotape or MCM and configure to your liking. I'd recommend turning down the motorcycle audio because it's loud and annoying as hell. Set a hotkey for teleporting the bike back to you since it doesn't have a map marker and can get lost easily. You should also set hotkeys for speeding up or slowing down the bike since you'll need to be doing that quite often. If you'd like, you can disable fuel consumption too. If you decide not to, you'll have to craft biofuel at a chem lab. Driving this motorcycle is a painful experience. Before long, if you drive at the faster speed settings, the game will freeze and force you into a loading screen for a few seconds before continuing. Like I said in the intro, maybe a faster SSD, RAM, and CPU could help a little, but ultimately this game engine was never designed to allow the player to travel at such high speeds. The camera is screwed. It's supposed to zoom out and show you riding in third person, but 9 times out of 10 I got stuck in this pseudo first person mode when riding the bike. Honestly, I think the bike looks better in first person anyways. Needless to say, controls are terrible and the bike gets stuck on everything. I don't think the bike can be damaged, but you certainly can be while riding it. It's trivially easy to drive past enemies while on the bike, however. There's a little bit of customization available. You can change your paint job, add a backpack, or a makeshift seat for dog meat. Nothing could make this mod worthwhile, but all the niceties and quality of life features are appreciated. This mod occupies a distant second place on this list. Our next mod is Commonwealth Vehicles. This mod's vehicles are crafted at a chemistry lab. There are 12 different vehicle grenades available. Just throw a grenade and out pops your vehicle of choice. 
But this is one of those Sophie's choices because no matter what you choose, you'll find each vehicle turns on a dime and has terrible collision, even worse than the drivable motorcycle mod. You'll get flung into the air or stuck on objects without even trying. Even the gyrocopter gets stuck on objects that it should be able to fly over. And all vehicles are extremely slow. Try as I might, I wasn't able to outrun the terrain using them, which I guess is a positive. But what's the point of having a car that can't hit 20 kilometers an hour? You might as well get out and run. Some of the vehicles come with turrets attached to them. These turrets fire automatically at enemies, you have no control over it, which sucks. I don't have any more to say about this mod, there's no customization, no fuel consumption, companions can get in the vehicles, but that's about it. This mod stinks, let's move on to our next crappy mod. Drivable Cars Redux. This mod is a little bit better. Instead of crafting the vehicles at a chem lab, you build them at your settlements or find them out in the world. These vehicles have trunks for storage and headlights that automatically turn on at night. That's cool, but they still control like ass and have horrible hitboxes. At least these vehicles are a little faster than Commonwealth vehicles, but that's not saying much. Again, there's no fuel consumption or downside to using the vehicles, there's no customization, nothing unique about this mod. Don't download it, let's move on. Our fourth mod is Humvees of Fallout. This mod is a veritable pain in the ass to install. It requires another mod called Wasteland Garage, which is a gigabyte and a half in size and is separated into three downloads. This mod is based off of Drivable Cars Redux, so the process of building vehicles is similar, you do it at a workshop. These Humvees also have the same speed, the same trunk storage, and the same pain train style knockdown effect as Drivable Cars Redux. The mod adds Humvee parts caches all over the Commonwealth and Nuka world. I don't think you can craft Humvee parts, you have to find the caches or spawn them in. You equip parts on your Humvee as apparel, and there is a lot of variety available, but I can't stomach driving these vehicles for more than a minute. I'd much rather stay on foot. Forget about this mod, let's move on. Our next three mods are all made by the same person and share a lot in common, so we'll go over them all at once. They made a lot more than three mods, but I can't be arsed to look at them all. It should suffice to say they aren't very good either. First up is the Jeep, which crashes my game whenever I try to scroll over it in the workshop menu, so I can't review this mod. It doesn't work. Next up is the boat. The boat mod comes with a long fetch quest to find a bunch of magazines to build boats of your own. Once I found the magazines and started building boats, I was actually impressed with the fact that these vehicles seem to have a turning radius. They still handle poorly, but much better than prior mods. Unfortunately, this mod has a weird breakdown feature. I've had problems with getting soft locked and stuck on a boat, and most of the map isn't water, so boats are of limited utility. I do like the tiny house interiors some of the boats have, and you can attach guns to the boats which you can fire manually, but this mod still isn't worth using. Last up is the APC, which can be found next to the Atom Cat's garage, but you'll have to fight your way through a ridiculous amount of gunners, their robots, as well as static APCs and tanks to get to it. It's a tough fight, but nothing God Mode can't handle. You need a whole shitload of materials to fix the APC, and after cheating them in, you'll have to fight a dog that later becomes your companion. He barfs up some magazines you'll need to pick up, and you find even more magazines later on. These magazines unlock upgrades for your APC. The interior of the APC is a tiny house workshop which is cool, and the APC has a good turn radius and a working manual fire turret. Sadly, it still has the same constant breakdown issue the boat has. This mod just isn't worth using either. Our final mod, and the only one you should download, is Flyable Personal Vertibird. You can build vertibirds at any workshop. Depending on your settings, the building process might be difficult because it can require parts from crashed vertibirds. Also depending on your settings, these vertibirds might require fusion cores as fuel to operate. You can fly them manually, but the controls leave much to be desired. Personally, I just sit in the gunner seat and use the autopilot. The only real problem I have with this mod is there's no ability to customize your vertibirds beyond a few paint jobs. Swapping out parts would have been nice to see. Regardless, this mod kicks the dick off of any land-based transport mod you can find for Fallout 4, and it's a great way to get around for those who want something more immersive than fast travel. That's my quick look at the state of these mods. Yeah, they suck, but what did you expect? Hopefully I'll have a more interesting video out for you next time, viewers. But until then... Toodles.